Hello, 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 and welcome to the Drag Race Recap here on Reality TV Rehap Ups. I'm your host, Liana Boris, and today we're going to be talking about RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 15, the lip sync Lollapurusa reunited or something like that. Not so much a reunion, but we did get a lot of lip sync performances and a winner crowned from the eliminated queens. So first, let me welcome in our wonderful panel here to help me break everything down. First, Amon Adwin. Amon, how are you? Lovely. I love a good old Lollapurusa. Love to watch these bitches slay each other on the stage, the new stage, might we add. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a good time. It wasn't the outcome that I wanted, but it certainly was an outcome that was well deserved for sure. <laughs> yes. And Beth Dixon. Beth, how are you? I'm doing great. We got to see some really fantastic drag and lip syncs and artists who we didn't expect to do certain things do certain things and it was just a great episode so i'm excited to cover it with you guys today i completely agree i had a lot of fun and i do feel like this feels if they're going to do a lip sync Lollapurusa, this feels right mm -hmm. because we've had some of the seasons, especially all stars with like the queen of the fame games or whatever that was called some way to recognize the Queens that get eliminated. And this is another mm -hmm. way to do that. And I think that it fit really well. It didn't, Although, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of a disruption in the flow of the season to lead up to the finale. It still felt really fun to see all these queens back, especially those who maybe felt like they had underperformed or we had a different expectation of them. And we'll go through mm -hmm. all of that. Megami. Uh, and it was nice to, to be surprised. So I think that this was just overall really fun. And we'll get into all of the good details about this. But Aman, what were your overall impressions of this episode? I know. I, I I thought it was a good time. Um, sometimes the lip sync the the lip sync um soul episodes can be a little like um a little bloated sometimes. Mm -hmm. I feel like this one was uh they I think that they did this pretty well. Um, and I mean I think it's always great when you the the queens get a chance to win money even if they're not um going to win the show because the queens have been very vocal over the past few years about how you spend so much money on drag race now like you could walk in there in season one season two season three spending i'd probably say maybe if i had to guess back then you would probably be spending like what maybe 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 three to four to five thousand dollars maybe now yeah. it's like forty thousand dollars at least for like um candy was the guest on uh the roscoe's viewing party this week and she said that for all stars eight she spent 40k and I will say All Stars is a little different because it is a little they different, got a little bit more money. But that said, most of these queens, to your point, are spending fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. How much money? Mm -hmm. Like what? A lot of these people Crazy. are spending like the equivalent of like un like a wedding, <laughs> essentially, like in less a little less than that in some cases. But like that's incredible. I was looking at like just pictures of like season seven, eight and even nine and ain't no way that they were spending anywhere near that. And they, like people were coming for Shea Coulee this past week to be yeah. like, girl, look at how much you like did not crush the runway on season nine. I was like, comparatively, she was crushing the runway on season nine. Like that's the point is that then she was mm -hmm. able to come back with a little bit of all-stars money, but now everybody has to go on like the first time with all-stars money. And it's like, where are you getting that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are a far cry from Rebecca Glasscock coming in <laughs> in jeans from Wet Seal. You know what I mean? Like that, <laughs> with the fact that Joe Black can get red to fill for wearing H&M, you know, it's just, it really just goes to show like the changes that we've seen in Drag Race over the years. So I'm all for celebrating, giving the queens more money, more opportunities to win. I mean, especially I'm assuming Drag Race is making a shit ton of money. They can afford to give some of that right. back to the queens who are competing yes, the, show, the okay? queens their damn money yeah. come yes. on now i completely completely agree pay the girls pay, pay the girls the uh. ah. yes see you <laughs> okay I, uh whew. yeah beth no i was just gonna say i have to say you know what we called last week we said the m's are here to slay for this week what we did not include though was Magami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, well, we said the M's. Okay, so like we knew that. We so knew it was inherently implied. <laughs> yeah. 
it's it's honestly oh all of your fault if you didn't think that we were going to include Megami in that when we said yeah, that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's your bias showing, not ours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, look, let's 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 get into it. Let's talk about it because I think that the headline of the episode, even though Morphine, shout out, congratulations, deserved in my opinion. I think for her to ultimately win based on the individual performances, but Megami is really the headline of this episode because mm-hmm. so I didn't get to watch it live and on Twitter and Reddit I started seeing Megami's name pop up a lot and I was like this is weird like why is Megami showing up so I thought that was like maybe there's some drama she like got into a fight with someone no no Amon she crushed it in this episode she made such smart choices with this lip sync and I I loved the fact that the like she was underestimated you always love those underdog stories about like bitches counting one of them out and mm-hmm. she was like, I'm not one to be played with. Like, yes, maybe my talent show number was a little cray cray. Well, not cray cray, but you know, a little, you know, it wasn't really good. A little underwhelming. You, a despite little underwhelming. the message. So they were like, oh, I'm gonna, that must be, this girl don't know what she's doing. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> she knew what she was doing. And mm-hmm. she had, each performance was different for each song. She tailored it to each song. Um, and I just think that that was, that was like the gag of of the episode. Like it was to the point where I was like, "Look, I want Mirage to win, but if Magami pulls this out, I'm not gonna be mad." Like, do what you need to do, baby. Sure. So, yeah, no, she can't. She ate that. She ate that. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should have known. We should have seen it coming from the girl group challenge. You know what I mean? Like we've we've had those elements. It almost feels like maybe she's getting in her own way. But yeah, here I think she crushed it. We'll go through the individual gags from, you know, puppets to predicting the splits, all of that. Oh, so mm-hmm. good. We'll go through all of those details. Um so, okay. Beth mentioned this, new stage. So, yeah. I think this is from Secret Celebrity Drag Race. Like I've seen yeah. this stage before somewhere. Are they just going to use this for the next two episodes or are they like, I assume, is this, or is, is this like new stage, new stage, like new stage, no more old stage. I think they filmed the finale live this past week elsewhere. Okay. So I think that this is for the episode. I think they were basically like, look at the new stage for this episode, but I could be very, very wrong. Why did I think they had already filmed the finale? Was that a rumor that I heard that actually isn't true? And I, I just have no decided idea. And that, that very well could be it. But all of a sudden this week, I was seeing all of the like them on the red yeah, carpet okay. answering questions and such. So oh, okay. it could have been that they filmed it a couple of weeks ago, but they started releasing that this week or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I love this stage. It was giving very much like facelift. It reminded me so much of when uh, those little leaked pictures of the new Big Brother house uh, outdoors or outer set um, got leaked on Twitter. And we were like, oh, yes, bitch. Yes, come on now. <laughs> So, I mean, I would not be mad if this becomes, like, the new main stage. It was kind of giving us very much, like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire vibes, especially with, like, the graphics <laughs> of the song choices down at the bottom. I was like, this is uh, my mm, my early 2000s brain is getting tickled right now. So, Oh, my God. Um, wait. You're so right, though. It did look mm-hmm. like who wants to be a millionaire. And the little square, like, boxes and <laughs> yeah. stuff looked like mm-hmm. the answers for who wants to be a millionaire. Oh, my That's God. So Could funny. you imagine if they'd spoofed that completely and they'd be like, would you like to call a friend up to <laughs> lip sync against them? Or would you like to Ooh, ask the audience who you want to go against kind of thing? That Ooh. would be so funny. They should have done that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, Okay, so I did a quick, before we get into the episode uh, in detail, I did a quick Google search and found out that, uh, so according to Reddit, (laughs) which as we all know. Which probably knows way more than me, so let's be honest. Uh, It says that they did film the finale out of fear that the writer's strike would continue. This post was a few months ago though, so I don't know if how accurate that is, but they filmed the whole season like whole 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 season so i don't mm-hmm. know very interesting that makes me wonder I, did they have an audience and everyone just shut their mouths because i find that hard to believe well i, I assume th- they filmed multiple endings right so what i don't mm. what we we don't know is they may have filled an ending for all three of them right mm-hmm. because if they perform mm. like let's say a lip sync to their own song or the other alternative is if they eliminated one and then filmed a double i assume they filmed yeah. at least a double crowning if not a triple crowning just to interesting no. and i have to imagine we didn't really get much information about who the audience was even for this one but i would assume it's mm-hmm. a whole bunch of like wow employees who already have like certain contracts in place yeah. mm-hmm. so if they did it that way um <laughs> which i have to say 
when they showed all the camera angles for the new stage with the audience, it became blatantly clear that none of the audience were allowed to look anywhere except for forward because the judges panels behind <laughs> them. And it became one of those weird things where like, you know, that if it's like a real audience, people would be turning around to like, try to look at RuPaul. Yeah. But it was like, honestly, so cringy to me that all of a sudden you just had like these people who were like looking forward. And it would be like RuPaul shuts them up, but then they would like camera angle from behind. They all have perfectly straight faces looking forward. They're all perfectly still. I was like, they just kind of look like cutouts right now. Nothing you say to me matters right now. As that camera is rolling. rolling. <laughs> so good. So I was back and I was like, you know, these are employees who are like my literal job on the line. If I turn around, I'm done. <laughs> Um, yeah, there was in the audience, there was a pair of people, there was a, a, a man and a woman and the guy was like having a great time. And the woman was just like stone faced. Like she was really pork chop <laughs> during the All Stars 2 like yes. comedy show. They're the only ones I remember <laughs> from the audience, but anyway. Okay. So first things first, I do want to talk about the bracket structure. Okay. Because I think it's important that we touch on this. So the way that the bracket was devised, obviously you have 11 Queens, which makes it a very awkward, <laughs> awkward number. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they end up having five essentially lip syncs in round one with one lip sync of three people. That makes sense to me that then the winner of that would essentially move completely to the semifinals because essentially they've already beat two Queens. Mm -hmm. So that I get. The piece I don't really understand is then the semifinals, which one of the queens, just by luck of the draw, essentially, ends up getting a pass completely to the finals. So I thought that that was the only thing. I said, it was like, look, if you're going to do the semifinals, maybe do another three-way lip sync. The top two move on to the finale or something like that. Like, it felt weird that one queen just got an automatic pass. I don't know if you guys yeah. have the same anger frustration at me is fine whatever i know yeah. it's awkward but still that felt like the yeah no it, it that did stand out to me as well yeah i agree i agree one of the things i got thinking though is that because megami chose maya it evened out mm -hmm. everybody so like morphine they all had the same number of lip syncs if she had mm -hmm. chosen morphine morphine would have had more lip syncs than everybody else and that feels mm -hmm. a little unfair but i got thinking about it and i was like why wouldn't they just not have a three-way lip sync and just say, we're going to do luck of the draw. Whoever we pull out of the first one, you get to automatically advance to round like two or something like that. And oh you have God. a buy mm -hmm. just like people do for like other things. Like that's where the buy is, is in the first mm -hmm. round, quote unquote. Um, and so you yeah. go to round two and then you can start going, okay, let's start looking at what numbers we've got. But. Right. Because yeah. I guess if that if that were the case, then it would have been I think you still would have had three people, though, coming out of round two, because then there right. would be three lip syncs of two. So and then have a three way lip sync at the semifinals. and then have the person who wins that one go to the final because like that makes more sense. You would have beaten two people within round two. So if you advance all the way to the finale, now it seems like you did what you needed to do in round two in order to do that. Yeah. Um. I get that. I, I think uh, it's tough, though, because I don't like three-way lip syncs. Um, yeah. They're just too distracting. Oh, my God. That reminds me. The Miss Mojo video. The six-way li six lip sync. I totally blocked that from my memory that a six-way lip sync even happened. It was like, so it, bad, too. Uh, I, yeah. I'll, I wake up screaming in the middle of the night <laughs> with the image of Honey Davenport, Davenport <laughs> jumping off the stage and losing her shoe. And we probably being like... <laughs> <laughs> it's that is my sleep paralysis demon is honey davenport in the faux leather latex kind of like gown outfit on the ground on this like not even on the stage on the and ground then the under begging, the stage the begging face to not get sent home after you just did that i'm like honey mm -hmm. honey <laughs> like, oh, come on oh god it's i i watched that and and here's the thing too, like I still think like Honey Davenport needs to come back for an All Stars because I actually really think that they had like incredible drag. But I just was sitting there and I was like, no, that's so awkward. <laughs> Oh, Stop gosh. thrashing. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back and get into round one. So Dawn is selected as the first competitor and Dawn yeah. picked Amanda specifically because Amanda picked the song that Dawn would want to perform to. And I will say Dawn so like positive throughout this entire episode, but just, and she knew she wasn't going to win. So she was just there to have fun. I mm -hmm. Can I be honest? 
I think she literally knew that Amanda would beat her. And I think she wanted to give Amanda a better shot because they're really mm-hmm. close friends. Like she's not going to say that on reality TV. She's going to sit there and say, oh, it was because I knew that this was a song that I want to do. Let's have some fun. I think um, Dawn knew that this wasn't in her wheelhouse, but it's in her West uh, besties uh, wheelhouse who was left week three. Uh, so let's have her come out and show her stuff like that that was what it felt like um but it was so much fun and even seeing don like leave and go back to the queens afterwards and be like let's like watch i'm so excited like just shout out to her for for being so upbeat about it but Mm -hmm. uh with that said i i felt like you know it's not like she did horrible or anything i thought that she had a good entertaining performance but amanda was like leaving it all on the stage Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm I uh, I know I mean I I mean I never really feel like um Dawn does a bad job like even when she got sent home I felt like her performance was still pretty admirable it wasn't mm-hmm. you know every, anything to call it home about but it was still there but bitch I would have chosen this song too damaged is my fucking shit <laughs> I love this song I was obsessed yeah. with it when it came out like I just uh it's just like one of those it's just it's perfect pop I love damaged and Danity came and oh may they rest in peace not dead but like them <laughs> I, I just went through like so many emotions it's like a split second and i was like they're dead they're dead they're not dead okay <laughs> i feel like they, they need to put their differences aside and they need to come back together real quick so they can just stick it to diddy one more time before he goes to jail mm. i just would love for that to happen like oh my Let's god do it <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, okay, so I uh, look. I agree. I think that Dawn did a good job emoting with the song, but yeah, Beth totally like Amanda with the pussy pounding, the heel clacks, like all of that. Mm-hmm. She just put so much energy into the into the performance. And also, I mean, maybe it was because that we didn't get any like super close ups, but her makeup looked so much better. I mean, we already saw her improve a lot throughout the season, so it was nice to see her come back and be in form, even though Q was still reading her a little bit for her lumpy pack. <laughs> but I couldn't tell. So good for her. You know, they are great. like, oh my God, they are setting this bitch up for like the perfect all stars redemption. Like I just I know, right? Everyone is just talking so much shit about her. And I just uh mm-hmm. like plain whatever. She was being funny. She was being, you know, cheeky about the whole thing. But at the same time in the back of my mind, I was like, oh my God, leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, it was really uh, funny because Amanda tweeted out, can somebody make me an edit of the damaged lip sync but cut out aircraft talking shit, LMAO? I want to <laughs> tune it out. And then right, somebody like, not aircraft. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she it was went so school. funny. And then somebody responded with like, what about the Q thing? She's like, yeah, if you could edit that out too, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, speaking of the edit, I do feel like in general, if there was not a question about who won the lip sync, the edit didn't really try to obfuscate it and make it feel like, oh, it's anybody's win. You know, they were like, look, we're going to tell you Amanda beat Dawn, Megami beat Q. Like, we're not really going to try to hide it. And I did appreciate that, that they were like pretty open about it. Because otherwise you're like, come on. Dawn you was know, flirting hardcore with that guy that was sitting right in front of her at the audience that one time she's crawling <laughs> towards the edge of the stage. You just see her like, ah, can you fix my H-E-R-T? Come here. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, you know okay. what's also interesting, though, is that with mm-hmm. the three, the final three sitting backstage and then Dawn joins them and everything, it was interesting to me which queens got – like a moment where they go into the background or or like into the back room, into the work room and Mm -hmm. said, which Queens did not because there were Mm. two Queens who did not get a moment of them walking in at the very least, let alone interacting with the Queens there. One was Geneva and the other was Mirage. And it was because of the format changing, I think to the next round, but it was just like felt a little shady. And I think it also (laughs) was a little, um, I think it honestly was the editors trying to like make the, lip sync bracket keep moving rather than like now we have to check back but if i were geneva and mirage i'd be like what the hell like i had a moment when i'm back backstage and i just lost and like it's like great job geneva okay for the next thing we're gonna blah, blah. they don't even go backstage to look at it. it's so funny i clocked that immediately i didn't oh, clock that. Really I have to go back and watch that part mm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's so rude it. it's so rude <laughs> 
So rude. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about Q versus Megami. So Q is selected via random draw and then selects Megami. And then Megami gets to select the song, What About by Janet Jackson. And we get the, it's interesting because we get the talking head from Safira, or maybe it was in the, the room, the workroom, that Q saying Q made a smart choice going for Megami, mm -hmm. which shows that not only was the audience underestimating Megami, but so were the other queens at that time, mm -hmm. which I think is very interesting to see. And then, well, we know how this ends with Megami winning him on. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, I mean, I'm not going to fault Q because like, I do think that, like, hmm, how do I put this? I think that, like, Mag Magami's never going to give you flips and dips, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not her shtick, right? So, like, if I'm Q and I know that my body is a little awkward, because Q, come on now, Q is not that Q. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, if I was, <laughs> it's no shade, it just is what it is. If I were her, I probably would have gone for someone who I know for sure is not going to have something over me in that department, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, I get it, but... I think, again, what they just didn't account for was that, like, Megami is an emotional bitch. So if there's anything she's going to do, she's going to tap in to the emotion of that song. She's going to make it work. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. she worked that stage, and it it just, it just was just giving. And it's not that Q, you know, took it and just laid down and, you know, accepted defeat. It's just that that camera was not loving Q in this lip sync. It yeah. loves Megami. Mm -hmm. I think, too, that this is a prime example of like I you know we talked a lot of bit about this last week where I was like I wish there's like one song that's like a Broadway song or something that you can like emote to or something like that that's not going to be about flips and dips and the, mm -hmm. Megami is exactly that kind of lip syncer that when I go out to a drag show I want somebody who can make me laugh or can make me feel something um, without needing necessarily all the dips and tricks. Because I love dips and tricks, don't get me wrong. I will be throwing dollar bills at the stage. Let's go. Like if I saw half the shit I saw on, you know, this week's episode of Drag Race, I would be in debt. Um, it just like, <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing. Like, But Megami is the kind of lip syncer that when I think of drag queens, like the whole idea of lip syncing at first was to pretend you are the artist and make us like mm -hmm. think that you're the one singing. And mm -hmm. we've moved so far away from that. And I agree. One thing that I loved about Megami that we started to see it with the Janet Jackson and then we saw it with Cher and we see it moving forward. She can embody the artist that she's singing. And whether she's being campy or whatever, it still gives you that illusion. And she was so good at it. And I also want to give Q some props because I felt like this was Q's best performance that she had done throughout the season when it came to lip syncing, dancing, emoting, that kind of thing. I thought that she really did a great job. And it just, it like you said, Iman, I felt like Megami just owned the stage in a way that Q couldn't compete with. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, oh, can, we, can we talk about the... I'm sorry, Liana. Can yeah. Can we talk about um, the final three um, looks real quick? Because... Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. I, ha I, have, I have them. Or do you want to... Oh, do you want to wait until later on? We can do later later on. It's fine. Oh, you want to... It's up to you. Whatever you'd like. I feel like now that I brought it up, we should just go ahead and do it. Just do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on. Because I just have one more comment about that lip sync. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, QV Megami. Okay, so it's Janet Jackson, right? Q has a nip slip reveal so awkward she that, did like, i missed that i missed yeah, that too no, no no it didn't happen it happened after like when she pulled her it was after the performance when q was it was like okay magami you win and then q was like leaving and like has her tits like reveal oh wait, and i like, still no didn't wonder. clock that she but okay so i didn't clock it at until after and i was like oh my god jan jackson like tits showing super bowl awkward wait so you said Just it was after like, magami won yeah it was after magami won let me see if i can pull up the um this let me see if i can pull epic. it up but yeah yeah um so that was the <gasps> deal or did uh, i dream that oh uh, did no she it? did i just i just watched it yeah yes! i didn't even, I you think she I... forgot to do it in the lip sync okay i don't know Maybe. i don't know because part of me is like 
if I were her and I clocked it, like I would not want to do a tit reveal for a Janet Jackson performance just because yeah, of like the history of it all. It might be a little intense. Meanwhile, yeah. see, meanwhile, but... I'm like, I think that would be freaking iconic. <laughs> right? <laughs> so like... then it's like almost perfect, right? Yeah. Because, you know, or you could do it with the like the reference to the Super Bowl, yes. like trying to like cover it up or something. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it like just... I feel like if anyone <gasps> gets away with, we can get away with that kind of thing, it will be a drag queen. So I think this is definitely the arena right. to do That's something like thing. that. Is because nobody nowadays is blaming Janet Jackson, right? We're blaming. Yes, we've all figured out the truth. <laughs> we all know the truth. Um, and what, and we, hold on, what logistics of that again? Because wasn't and not to steer too far away from Drag Race, but wasn't there like a little pasty on her nipple, or was her nipple out? No, there was a pasty on her nipple. There was a pasty. But I there. So like, what are we freaking out about? I, like, I know. If this was what two thousand three or something like that. Yeah, we yeah. can have full on racists on TV at that point, but God forbid we see a boob. Not like, a boob. A boob is the first thing we all saw when we were born. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, but it's like you know, it's the whole joke with like winner winner nipples getting blurred, right? Where it's like on Drag Race, where oh, it's if they're not if they're if it's in not in drag then it's like nipples okay but breastplate yeah. nipples not okay <laughs> right it's so so fake it's so made up it's such bullshit anyway it's so i just want you all to know that nipples in my opinion are so offensive i i just <laughs> the thing that everybody has on their body is just like what why why are you so it's like it's like looking pepperoni. at a nose Ugh, like why <laughs> No, oh, do you have to have that, that out in off public? Your chest. <laughs> <laughs> that was, okay, so that was a quality dad joke. I appreciate that. <laughs> nipples, <you>. nipples aside, <laughs> let's, let's talk. Let, let's talk about the looks. Why? Why the hell not? Look, yes, let's go for it. <gasps> so, Aman, do, is there someone specific that you wanted to talk about first? So we can, we can jump uh, to them. Oh my god. I just love Nymphia so much. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Like, I just need. And when now I think I finally understand the because I've, I've always known what sickening meant, but I think that I finally feel it now because there's just like I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> I'm so over it. Like take your ass on somewhere. Like I just need for you to do. It's just the the attention to detail in that face makeup. Like I just. I couldn't tell what I was looking at at first, but then you knew it immediately. But at the same time, it was like, I just couldn't look away. Just like, and then the, the garment itself was just so, uh, uh, I just, I just feel like Nymphia just, if she's not like a costume designer or if queens that are like, bitch, if you are trying to get on Drag Race 17 or 18, because 17 is probably already cast by now. If you're trying to get on 18 and you're not trying to hit up Nymphia, you are not, you're not trying to win. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not trying to win because it's just the imagination and the creativity is just it's just, it's just taking me it's just taking me out and I'm over it I'm over it I'm over the bitch I really am. <laughs> See, I looked at this and I was like, you know what? If it was based off of finale looks alone, crown her. I don't know how mm -hmm. you would crown her with that headpiece on, but crown her. <laughs> it is gorgeous. There's nothing wrong with it. Like objectively, you know, I'm no sorry. Notes. No, 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 no. My no note notes. is gorgeous. Why? What? Why would you raise the bar this high so that I will have expectations <sighs> from years to come forever? This was absolutely amazing. And I love on top of it. Obviously, it's a, a, a big homage to her heritage and um mm -hmm. and, and to Taiwan it's a huge love letter to her entire life her art that kind of thing and I just sat back and I was like that's my fellow Leo queen that's my fellow mm -hmm. house of wind member <laughs> I feel so bonded with her like this is so clearly what I would do you know just me mm -hmm. <laughs> actually this for the record this is not what I would do I would not culturally appropriate <laughs> But I mean the excellence version. That's what I but would you, do. <laughs> but you know what though? That's what I've always appreciated so much. And we've talked about this before with her. I just mm -hmm. appreciate that she is borrowing um from other not just like from uh, like all sorts of Asian cultures. And I think that that's just like very, very special because it's like she's like, I mean, obviously she knows she's Taiwanese, right? Mm -hmm. But she's she's like, I have an opportunity to like highlight this diaspora. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to I'm going to do my research. I'm going to make sure that I am doing it respectfully. I'm going to make sure that I am 
you know, true to whatever it is that I am borrowing that culture from. And I just, I, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I just can't, I can, I can't get enough of it. I really can't. It's just, it's just, the bitch is smart. The bitch is really, really smart. And mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just over it. And like, I don't know, man. Safira, like, it, uh, like, look, girl, like, you are lucky you are from fucking Philly right now. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about Safira's look. Uh, so again, shout out to at drag at drag dot looks for the lurks here. Um, lurks. So this is uh, what color is this? Teal, like a green teal. teal foam. Green. Yeah, the yeah. Like foam. That. Yeah, yes. Like she's going to the Kentucky Derby with that big ass hat. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's giving black lady, black church lady down, <laughs> rodeo, like a Kentucky Derby down. Yeah. It's giving like, oh, it's hot, isn't it? Like it's giving that. It's yeah. like, it's giving pretentious, but like, bitch, you know, you're not actually pretentious. Like it's giving like, I'm going to be ostentatious because I'm going to be ostentatious for the sake of being ostentatious. It's just, it's, it's, it's good. I love it. Mm -hmm. I do love it. Not as much as Nymphias, but I love it. <laughs> no, this was this was beautiful. And again, there's not a single one of these looks that I felt like was horrible. I thought they all walked out and I was like, oh shit, what are they gonna even wear for their I like disagree. finale I think it's a one? Oh, okay. I'm excited to hear that then. Um, but no, this was gorgeous. I this is one of my favorite colors, and it just mm -hmm. it looks so good on her. And like I love the orange wig with it. Um, I love the bag, the gloves, the ring, all the accessories are just there. Um, it's, it's old money with a new twist. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's gorgeous as well. I think, um, you just lose a little bit with the hat being black, mm -hmm. but that yeah. would be like literally my only uh, critique, but Aman, I want to talk about the, <laughs> your opinions on the googly eyed monster here from plain Jane or sorry. What was it? Airplane airport. Air Aircraft. Aircraft. Not airport. Yes, aircraft. Airport. Davenport. <laughs> Kennedy Airport. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So Amon, go. Okay. I'm a, I, okay. I was being a little hyperbolic when I said it was horrible. It's not horrible. It's not. It's just. <laughs> and I mean this with every single pun intended. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> 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 She's looking at a lot. So there's so much. There's so it. many eyes. Like, and like, I, I mean, I, I feel like I do get uh, it, but I don't get it. But I'm also like, why? I, I, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I don't know why it's not like, um, like hitting me the way that it should. I don't know why. It's mm. just, I just, I, I guess I just don't, I just don't get it. Like, I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to glean from it other than googly eyes everywhere, you know? I just, mm -hmm. Uh, it's it, 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 it's definitely interesting. It's definitely memorable for sure, for sure. I mm -hmm. think that I will be like, oh, I remember that 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 I shit from plane, <laughs> but I just, uh, it's not. I don't know. I just, I, it's not resonating. I'm sorry. And I tried to remove the bias. I was like, I'm on you, just being a plane hater. And I was like, well, I am a plane hater, but I also don't like this look. <laughs> I just, <I'm> like, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. I, I feel, feel like, like we've definitely seen better looks from her. I feel like. People should have said, Mama, kudos to you for seeing, for Googling. For spelling. <laughs> for spelling. She, <laughs> see, I love this because it's so irreverent and it's so off the beaten path and you didn't know what to expect. But that's also kind of like how I see plain. She's somebody who like has such classic, beautiful feminine features and yeah. then there's a twist to it every single time. It's a little out of the box. It's That's it's true. not going to be it's it's going to be camp, but it's also not even going to be camp. It's just going to be like what the fuck am I looking at? Uh, <laughs> and I really 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 love this uh this concept just because it's so what's happening. And for an episode where all she's doing is watching Queen's lip sync. Now, I, there's no way that she knew that when she packed this. Right. But what a perfect outfit for her to wear to be like, my, all my eyes are on you. You better bring it out. Because you know okay, that's how she was talking what? behind people. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, with that, with that, I kind of I kind of appreciate it more now. Okay. You just, you spun that for me. You spun that. You ate that. 
Yeah, I, I I like it. I think it's creative. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you can boil it down to be like, oh, yeah, she stuck a bunch of stuff on a bodysuit, right? Because that's like, I don't know, to a corset. Uh, but I do think that it's very creative. I haven't seen anything like this before. I think what really makes that's it also true. is the glasses. Yeah. So seeing her when she had the glasses on and like when the eyes were kind of in like different directions, that mm -hmm. was really funny watching her spin them. So I I enjoyed it. I mean, look, if you're going to compare, it's, it's tough to compare it to like Nymphia. Nymphia's look which is just g gag gorgeous stunning so for me this is just a bit of a different category in yeah, more of the like sure. weird goofy but Nymphia's for me it was my favorite look of the three easy for this week so yeah the game Overwatch Overwatch 2 just had an uh -huh. April Fool's Day thing where you logged on and you didn't know but all of the characters were wearing googly eyes for like a few days for <laughs> April Fool's and so she came out on this and I was like oh my god it's Overwatch <laughs> <laughs> like this literally just happened is she an Overwatch fan I love it <laughs> oh my gosh it was so funny okay Let's get back to the lip syncs. So we already talked about Dawn versus Amanda, Q versus Megami. Now let's talk about Morphine versus Geneva. So Morphine gets chosen by Luck, selects Geneva, and they perform to Million Dollar Baby by Ava Max. Beth, what do you think about this lip sync? <laughs> As you take a sip. Um, <laughs> this was probably my least favorite lip sync of the night. Um, okay. I, I just, I didn't, it wasn't a song that like it's a song I love. I love I love Ava Max, but I I don't know. I I like I loved Morphine. I completely can't tell you a moment about Geneva, and that I don't mean that in a shady way. I just mean it as like I think the camera literally wasn't on Geneva, <laughs> like at all. Yeah. I think this was yeah. Morphine's lip sync, and I think part of that is the edit because we know that she's going to you know continue on, mm -hmm. um, but. It just, I felt so bad for Geneva because we have this moment where you have someone, I think it's Dawn, who's like, you know, like, this is what Geneva does. Like, she's a good lip syncer and such. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, but like her legacy on the show is that she's not a good lip syncer. And like, <laughs> ugh, you know, I'm so, and, and that's not because... I think that I think out in the wild, out in local drag and out in, you know, shows and all that kind of stuff, like, I bet she's amazing but it mm -hmm. just i felt like this was so one-sided with the camera that i just i kind of like didn't feel the tension at all um so that's just kind of generally how i felt about this particular lip sync but i thought you know it i thought morphine did such a great job geneva just reveals way too early and yeah. it's just like she doesn't know what the tempo of the song is to be like that's the moment you know yeah it was, yeah, it was it was the it was the timing. It was the, yeah. the uh, more, none of um Geneva's uh, uh, choices really made a lot of sense. The reveal was kind of very early and also very inconsequential. It was like, all right, well, let me take this off and throw it. Like it wasn't even like a dramatic. And then like the death drop that she did was not at the crescendo. It was just not. I don't know. I mean, it, it yeah. She, I mean, she tried. She tried. She tried. She did what yeah. she could. Um, and yeah, going up against um, Morphine is always going to be a bit of an issue. The one critique that I will have with Morphine is that, bitch, that little red wig was peeking out the entire time, girl. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> we could see it right there. So, like, you might need to a little bit down, a little down, a little bit more. Um, and the reveal oh. itself was a little choppy because, like, you swung it and it, like, caught on your arm and then you were like, oh, shit. And then, like, so... <laughs> <laughs> it kind of gave me a little bit of peppermint um doing the wig flick over yeah. at at Trinity but like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at least I felt like peppermint's was like whatever here you go this one felt like Bleh. like shit <laughs> 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 yeah yeah i mean look i think it was fine it's funny that geneva you know comes into the episode and look i was excited about her i think she's a good drag performer i picked her in our draft uh but when course, she was yeah. like <laughs> i've lived i've been i've lip synced in every episode i was in i was like i mean i know one of them was for the win but i was like i don't think that that's the brag is that a record <laughs> is that a record is she a record <laughs> Maybe at literally every episode. One hundred percent of the episodes she was involved in, she lips. Yes, I don't think. Yes, any other and this one, that. right? Yeah. So yeah. add it, add it to the tally. I think uh, honestly, right. that probably is a record. Because <laughs> who other? Yeah, who else even has that? No. You're watching on YouTube. Make a comment below. Let us know. 
Like, I think you know, that a lot of people have can... lip synced a lot, but I don't think everyone has lip synced every episode. So, mm. Mm. I mean, you know, first eliminated queens probably hold that title, right? If they never came oh, back. Oh, yeah. But, the but most amount of episodes. Multiple, the most yeah, amount. Exactly. Yeah. The most amount of episodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Morphine wins. Great. Moving on. Mirage <laughs> v. Hershey. <laughs> Okay, so Mirage gets chosen, picks Hershey. Hershey picks Alone by Kim Petras and Nicki Minaj. And we start to get the confessionals from Mirage that were like, I don't know if I know the Nicki rap. I don't know if I know the lyrics. And I was like, are you kidding what are we me? Doing? I spent the whole lip sync nervous that she was going to get sent. I couldn't even enjoy it, Amon, <laughs> because I was just so like, oh, my God, please know the words. Please know the words. Please know the words. Like, I can't have a repeat of this. Uh, <laughs> I said, bitch, uh, I know you did not. The, all, you had one <laughs> fucking thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> all you had to do one was job. be in your hotel room and listen to the damn song. <laughs> Okay, that's all you had to do. And if you don't know these damn words again, like Valentina can finally walk free. Okay, <laughs> like I'm, <laughs> I'm over it. I'm over it. But I think it was just production meddling trying to give us a little, you know, a little, a little spice. Um, and she ultimately ends up turning it out. I do think that going against Hershey was probably a good decision. Hershey's not, uh, you know, she's not gonna just give it to you, but. I think that, I mean, look, mm, let me just say this. I have been, whenever like, I'm, I get into the subject of like, do I have a type? I'm always like adamant that I don't have a type. I think I have a type. <laughs> and it is dancers. Oh, okay. yes. That's a great type. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to wind up going to Vegas somewhere and falling in love with a stripper. I don't know what's going to happen in my future, but I will say <laughs> that, listen, I am forever going to be mesmerized by uh, Mirage's, the way that she moves her body. It's just, it just, it just, it just does something to me. It was her this season and last season it was fucking Anitra. So the the two of them, they just, they just, they, they, they just know what they're doing. And it just, it's just such a, it's just a, I thought the song choice was great. I thought the choices she made were great. I thought that Hershey did a good job as well. But if I had to give it to somebody, for sure, Mirage, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I love that Hershey at that moment was like, okay, you're going to just do a back bend. I'm going to stand right in front of you. <laughs> but then she didn't capitalize on that other than just to go, whatever. And then just walked away and gave her the stage anyway. And I was like, oh, Hershey, give us more. Give us more. Because I definitely, like, I was rooting for Hershey as somebody who I felt like yeah. I wanted to see more of from the season. Um, like you said, Amon, she didn't just like roll over by any means, but it very much felt like, okay, I need to just try to get in her way. And now I don't know how to capitalize that. So I'm just going to move out of the way. And I was like, no, that could have been your moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think there's something uh. about the way I agree with you, Amon, something about the way that Mirage and Anitra both move. That's so fluid. Like, it's so yes. smooth. Yeah. And I think that that is, for me, what's really appealing about watching them is just, it's like water. Like, oh, butter. It's mm -hmm. so just, roop, roop. It's smooth. So good. Um, like you and also you don't see them thinking. You don't see them Correct. contemplating and making choices. You just see, it's just, like you said, it's just fluid. It's just very, just yeah. First, compare that movement to someone like Amanda, who also moves very well, but it's very rigid. Like mm -hmm. this move, and then this one, and then this, and this, and this, and then blah 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 blah. Combo, combo, right? Yeah, it is very Mortal Kombat, very Sub Zero, yeah, Sub Zero, Katana. That's what I'm waiting for. I need someone to do a Katana cosplay on on this show. Why has there not been a video game? Runway. runway rupaul make it happen I please know. i want to see you're it. telling oh my god me, yes ah. you're telling me oh my god I would and live. please make it like the second episode so there's a lot of them i want to see yes it. exactly mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. the um the other thing that we got out of this lip sync that was absolutely lovely was mirage and confessional being like yeah, my first choice would have been Plasma, but she would have had like a whack ass song choice or something. It was like that. so <laughs> iconic. <laughs> Love great. that line. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, okay. So Mirage wins. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Our last lip sync is the three way lip sync between Plasma, 
Tsunami and Maya, and they do they get lip sync by Kalise. I think Maya was the one who was selected who ended up choosing Milkshake. That I was very excited about in terms of a song choice. But what I could not get over is Tsunami dressed like I don't know, like a colonial child. Like I could not get <laughs> over the look at all. And she was she wasn't even the focus, right? Because I really think it probably came down to plasma versus Maya. So tsunami's like mm-hmm. the third placer, just like chilling as a rich Victorian child in the background. <laughs> just like yeah, it over. she looked like she so was hard. ready to attend. Like she, like she was ready to accuse somebody out of Salem, which like, yes, yes, she did yes. it. Slay her. <laughs> What Slay she was bitch. saying was, uh, I'm going to go to my one room schoolhouse and <laughs> learn about milkshakes. Um, the best part about this is that for those that remember, Candy refused to do Khalees milkshake. Mm-hmm. And now we have Tsunami having to do it and looking like the berries oh, wait, and cream boy. But... I mean, yeah, because they were going to change it, right? And then she was like, absolutely not. Yeah. Paying for the sins of her, uh, of her parents. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Okay. So, uh, tsunami, uh, child aside, let's talk about Maya and Plasma because Mm -hmm. I think there's an argument to be made that Maya lost to Plasma here and that Mm -hmm. Plasma ultimately took it. Beth, Mm -hmm. you're preaching. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I think it was much closer than people are saying um i think there's a lot of people online who are saying plasma won it Uh, mm -hmm. i think there were a few moments that while they were full of energy with plasma it was almost just a little too cringe for me like the like body pumping portion i was like okay yeah yeah i like i like the maya in the background actually twerking while on a handstand a little better like you know like Mm -hmm. that was the kind of thing that i was like i'm gonna edge out maya here but if Plasma had been called the winner, I would not have been upset. No, no I wouldn't have been either. Same. I think that some of the choices that Maya made were just a little... I, it, I was like, okay, you're flipping just to flip. You know what I right. mean? Um, mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, yeah, like, yes, give us the flips, but know when to do it. You got to be tasteful with it. You got to it's, it's got to make sense with the progression of the song. Like that you have one to be tasteful in the song called one. Milkshake. <laughs> That yeah. one like roll across the stage that she did, like in the middle of a verse. I was like, why? Like, I so know. I just uh yes, you know, she she you know, she's given energy. She, her her movements were definitely the most like pumped out of the three of them. So I'm that's fine if she wins, but like I was a piece of me was like, ooh, I feel like Plasma did a little bit of a better of a job here. But okay. I think that they just wanted to keep Maya around for more flips and dips. Just oh, they sure. just wanted mm-hmm. one more, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's tough because we've seen Maya do a lot of flips already, right? So the individual tricks, are, which are incredibly impressive, become less impressive, like as mm-hmm. you've seen them. And then sure. you talk about matching the song and really embodying the song. And I do feel that Plasma maybe did a better job. Although it was interesting because Plasma sort of started out like it felt like trying to be sexy and then kind of went into like the jokey goofiness of it all. So, mm-hmm. you know, that was like maybe a little bit awkward that she was trying to do both. But I thought it worked. I thought it was fine. And I I definitely if Plasma had been chosen over Maya, I I actually would not have been upset either. So I will say the wig plasma. reveal for plasma. I oh, I, I wish she would have kept the original wig on because the yeah. I feel like that was the transition from this is a wig that looks good and fits the song to now I am um, uh, a Karen. I was like, yes, what is this? Julie Andrews. She- it was like the same wig as the sound of Ruzik or whatever the. <laughs> it was that wig. Good face. Yes, that one. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I was yep. more concerned about Khalees just busting on stage and being pissed off that uh, Milkshake got used again without her consent. I mean, not that I <laughs> disagree with her, but like, she threw a fit about the whole Beyonce thing a couple years ago on Renaissance. So I was like, damn, I wouldn't want that smoke. Like, she's clearly got a bone to pick. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move into the next round. So, Amanda versus Megami, which was funny because Amanda, so Amanda gets selected and then Amanda chooses Megami and Amanda's like looking around like, oh my God, who am I going to pick? And then Megami, like immediately, like it was not even, I think, a question for her. And again, this goes into the, oh, I think that she's maybe the weakest of all of the contestants. We get another talking head about how Megami is, is the weakest. And then Megami chooses 
share. So um, the shoop shoop song and Megami pulls it out here, Beth. Um, it, I don't know if she pulled it out as much as she put her tongue in it. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> the the, uh, the analingus uh, illusions for this Ooh. were uh, spicy and fun to watch. And but she went for it, <laughs> and she went for it to the point where yep. I was just like, she's going to have lots of grinder messages at the end of this uh, performance here. That is for sure. No, she she nailed it I, it was it was fun. like how do you do a song like share you're gonna have to either be share you gotta be chad michaels or you gotta do something to make rupaul laugh and the fact mm -hmm. that she knows that her she knows the song and she had moments where she had the share mouth going on so it looked like she was the one singing like i was talking about before but then you have this whole like kissing montage like Okay, you you got us. You got us. Because what we have going on on the other side is Amanda doing the same kind of moves that she was doing before without really, really embracing the song. Like, I'm not saying she did a horrible job. I, I had a mm -hmm. wonderful time watching her as well. But again, the headline is just Megami, like t making the most of what her intelligence and smarts and creativity and campiness and such can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for like older songs like this, if you were going to, um, if you're going to go the dance route and not the comedy route, then you have to like your dancing has to be a part of the time because I feel like a lot of what she was doing was like asynchronic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like it just was not like or not. That's not the word. What is the word when it's like not part of the specific time? Whatever. Um, it just was not like it just was not giving the energy of share. Um, it was definitely an energy filled performance from Amanda, but I felt like it was just not, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. get what I wanted to get from it. And yeah. I think that obviously Megami did a really good job. And if Megami has a significant other, I'd have been looking at her like, oh my God. High five. <laughs> like, her, her partner would be like, no notes. <laughs> you know, I'm like, come like, home oh. right now. <laughs> yeah. That's why it feels so good. Okay. <laughs> and now I get to see it. Oh, yeah. Uh all right. Next lip sync, Mirage V Morphine. This which... episode needs to be rated R. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 so, oh my god wait speaking of rated r okay so this is a super super random reference but i'm gonna say it so at the beginning of this lip sync rue goes the fickle finger of fate has chosen you to lip sync which is like an antiquated phrase in and of itself but one time Pui mm -hmm. and i were watching old amazing race episodes and there was one couple that got eliminated and the guy was like the fickle finger of fate has diddled us once again. <laughs> and I was like, bro, you can't say that. <laughs> so when Ruth said this, that's all I could think of. And it was right after Megami. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm dying I, right now. Yeah. You know, if uh, RuPaul knew that, RuPaul would have said that. I know. He said Unironically. That. Fickle finger of fate has diddled us once again, or whatever it was. Anyway, okay. So. <laughs> so funny. Morphin gets to pick the song, goes with Donna Summers, and uh, also describes Mirage as the middle boss, Amon. <laughs> Just uh, saying, essentially, this is the boss that you have to fight in the middle before you get to the final boss, which I thought was I, funny. I thought that was very apropos. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in, I, I think that she did a good job. I, I think that I'm not really sure what happened with Mirage here. Like, she was obviously she did a good job, but it did feel like she kind of like, held back a little bit a piece of me is like wondering like like was she too in her head about it because she knew that morphine is you know tough competition so she was like trying to like not give it all to you in the beginning so that she could come out and like just do a grand slam at the finish because you know, we get a little bit of a confession from her where we see um that she's reacting to morphine's son she's like oh you're gonna do all that then i'm gonna do this and i was like you but you didn't do anything. Do anything. <laughs> like, yeah i don't know if it was edited out i don't know but like it did feel a little muted. I was like, damn it. Like, uh, yeah, okay. it felt like Mirage was the one that was like losing health in the, in the video game sense. Right. And yes, that morphine came out after having just had a potion or something. And like, she's back to full health <laughs> or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I, I felt like she just, her energy wasn't there. And again, her fluid 
smooth movement was there, but it just didn't seem like it was in lock with the music. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I I had the same impression. I mean, this time it was a little bit easier because I, for me, like anxiety wise, because I did feel like she knew the lyrics. So I wasn't concerned about that, but I was like, this is the toughest competition. I mean, these are two absolutely stellar performances. Like this is what I expected the finale to be potentially right. Is the Mm -hmm. two of them. So this was while I simultaneously not worried for Mirage knowing the lyrics, I was the most nervous for just like, Oh my gosh, who's going to win. Who's going to win. I really felt like it was up in the air. Although at the end of the day, I do think that morphine deserved the win and her comment about like, this is about giving woman. She gave woman. It felt it, Felt like it really mm-hmm. matched the music more than Mirage did. So I, while I was also rooting for Mirage to win, I think that Morphine winning here was the correct decision. I have one comment, which is that she won the lip sync in the first five seconds because she did the Donna Summers bouncing, t- spinning around mm-hmm. moment. And Mirage did her own twirling, which was beautiful, but it's not Donna Summers. And if we know one thing about RuPaul, you gotta do the like little bounce Mm -hmm. twirl moment and you gotta do it like donna summers that is all he cares about and she won it within that minute and then and then on top of that she just did better but i just Mm -hmm. i sat there and i was like well she won Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the very beginning of it Mm -hmm. yeah well and the other thing too is so morphine picks so morphine picks the donna summer song leaving the go-go song for the next lip sync, Mm. which we do get the confessional about how apparently Maya didn't want to do that song. And so there was a little bit of strategy for both morphine picking the Donna summer song for her. And then also leaving the go-go song for potentially Maya to have to lip sync to. And we get Maya in this next round with Megami lip singing to, we got the beat and you know, a, Megami is the one who chooses Maya, which I think also maybe they knew that about the song. So that was why Megami was like, yeah, I'm going to choose Maya. She doesn't want to do the song. So that gives me the highest likelihood of winning, even though we saw, I think it was Safira who was like, well, Morphine's tired. Maybe you should go with her. So a little (laughs) bit of a gag pick, but ultimately, I mean, it works out for Megami. She ends up taking the win here, Amon. Yeah, I think that she just, uh, she understood the tone of the song a lot more. And she really takes the time to fill the space during instrumental breaks too. Um, she just kind of mm-hmm. just goes for it and just, um, she just knows she, she injects comedy when she can real quick. She goes back to being serious and giving you and giving you real lip sync realness uh, at other times. And I just think that she just, she just, she captured the song a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Whereas Maya, I mean, I think that she did show restraint and not flipping and dipping. I knew, I think that she made the right call and not doing all of that. But I think that, without some of her flips and dips sometimes it's kind of like she kind of feels a little naked so um yeah i think that i think that this was just a, a better showing from megami all around i also think that is so key it's like the one time she does do a split or something like that megami clocks the crap out of it and predicts mm-hmm. it with her fingers and mm-hmm. does the like whatever and then she just continues on and continues to own the stage gag of the century Mm -hmm. oh my god i also did not watch this episode on friday and i went online and this was the one thing i saw all over my timeline and i was like i need to know the context of this and so like i watched it and i was like i can't wait so when i finally watched it i knew it was coming and i was like "Ooh, mine's not doing any tricks for this and then that moment happened i was like no wonder it was so gaggy the one time Mm -hmm. she's trying to show restraint and she gets clocked by the competition. Ah! Incredible. Ah. Do you think that she actually understands why she lost though? Because like, do you think that the, the production is feeding her lines in the diary room? Because when she was like, I just don't see how Megami beat me. I was like, do you really not? Oh, so like, you, I don't... like, girl, you weren't watching her. Right. You were performing. That's what's tough. <laughs> yeah. Like, because you can't see that. And also with the way they were positioned, I think it was Megami was like ahead of Maya, kind of like off to the side like this. So mm-hmm. she, like even that moment. I'm I'm just everybody's doing splits like morphine or um, Maya wouldn't have seen that that gag. And so also, you know, there's probably a reputation to it as well that look, Megami's your drag like she's, 
you know, protecting queer art, but like her art's not worth protect, you know, like that's the, the reputation that she's going in with. So if you're Maya, then you're just like, yeah, I don't understand this, but watching yeah. it, then she should realize why she lost that. It's also because, uh, a thousand percent Liana. Cause I also am sitting back and thinking like, she is such so bitter for the rest of the episode. I will say that. And Maya, I don't blame you one bit because if you were the favorite to win and you yep. lose against somebody that everybody thought it was like not going to be good at this and now wins two lip syncs, one against you, like I also would not be like, I don't get it. But we do get in the last confessional. She's just like, I don't get the hand puppet thing, which we'll get to. And I was just like, oh, she's not getting the joke. Okay. Mm, Got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that could be that could be it as well. If you have yeah. different, you appreciate different it's things. Like, if it ain't a flip, it ain't shit. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she should make merch with that on it. That's lovely. <laughs> also, time out. RuPaul calling Megami McGag me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well. I, okay, like genuinely, honestly, people like Megami, I think, earned herself a spot on All Stars with this episode. Oh, like making her laugh. The fact that she got that nickname from Rue, I was like, okay, call her up for All Stars. Like, Megami mm -hmm. will be back. Anyway, this she has definitely she has her silky now. nutmeg ganache moment a la season uh, All Star 6. Agreed. She mm -hmm. has uh she has t shirts now that say McGag me. So uh, yes, they released McGag last me. night. So just saying, if anybody wants to support her that way, that's a wonderful shirt to get. Perf. I love that. So final lip sync, the finale, Megami versus Morphine. I will say the first Megami had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Like I genuinely thought Megami was gonna win the whole damn thing with the puppet. I do feel like her energy fell off and which allowed Morphine to really ramp it up and Morphine consistent the whole time. I think nailed it. I think ultimately the winner, but it's closer than I expected for sure. I'm in the same exact boat. I felt, I felt like it was almost to the three quarter mark where I sat back and I was like, I think Megami, even with the amplification of Morphine's movements and sexiness and everything, um, is is just not enough to overcome like how much Megami has been like demanding the attention on that stage and like doing things we're not expecting and giving us gags and camp and fun and like mm -hmm. we're entertained, right? But like you said, like once the puppet went away and once it's like that's one of those songs where it's like the same kind of tone beat the entire time yeah. and if you can't keep something up or if you don't have something else to go into it just lays there dormant and so that was like a little it would be like if you especially with a song like that where you have like guys and like you know like si like singing talking whatever it'd be like if you did love shack and like mm -hmm. only did it for the like love shack baby and then like didn't have anything else for the rest of the song. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do agree that I think that morphine really kicked it up at the end, but even with all that saying, I think I'm one of the few people who probably says, I think Megami should have won. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like you still would have given it to her. I think that she did enough to gather my attention. I do believe that she kind of lost it a little bit and morphine mm -hmm. kind of amped it up, but everything we saw morphine do, she, pretty much already did throughout the rest of the other songs and yeah <laughs> i was I gonna say is morphine slapping her ass the same as jack's doing the leg swing <laughs> or cameron michaels doing the split that like, or the george's split. punching the ghost yeah, the george is punching the air <laughs> like when you see those same moves over and over again they unless until you do them too much that then they become funny again <laughs> like yes. they lose their appeal a little bit so uh yeah. yeah that's that's definitely an argument i like that amon where do you fall on this it's interesting because like i I feel like I want to give it to Megami, but I do think that it's fair. I don't I don't agree with what Maya said in her confessional saying that Megami didn't know the lyrics. I think that Megami clearly knew the lyrics, which is why she was able to do this like in rhythm with what was being said. Mm -hmm. But I do think that it is sort of like if it is a lip sync and you're not using your lips and the other one is, it's kind of like mm. you know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. it, it's a little it's a little crunchy. Um, I think I think that uh, Morphine really started to begin to steal the show at the part um, 
of like the vamping part where like Megami is like swinging her hair, which looks great, mm -hmm. but she cheats with that fucking mm -hmm. ass. <laughs> okay, like she just starts ah! like it's just in like even Bruno at the judging panel like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And at that point, it was like, you don't want to stop watching. So it's just like, damn it. Like, so I think that, I, uh, I feel like if I were RuPaul, I still feel like I would give it to Megami. But uh, I think that Morphine really knew how to, like, bring it home in the end. So yeah. mm -hmm. it just, uh, yeah. Amon, may I ask how you felt about Morphine's ass in this episode? <laughs> yes, we need an ass update, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll be the first to say there were some times where she slapped it and I went, girl, it's not given what you think it is. is she it? said she's going to put the money into her body, though. And you know, I can't <laughs> wait. And you know what? That's why I'm like, I feel a little, I feel a little better about like what I said like a couple weeks ago because I was like, okay, so she's, she's planning on continuing on because she knows that there's still a little bit more work to be done. Now, again. I never want to come off as body shaming anybody. No, like, no, no, no. But she's so she's so open about her BBL and everything. So like, I, I just feel like mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's sort of like fair game to be like, okay, girl, well, like, you know, you could you could do a little something, something more with that ass, and that's okay. That's okay. Her ass looks fine the way that it is now, and it I'm does. I'm sure it'll look good if it if if she adds more shit to it. Whatever she wants to do with her ass, go ahead and pump it. Okay, do what you need to <laughs> what do. What a phrase! Adding more <laughs> shit to your ass, you know. Just... <laughs> I will say that I felt like um, I think booties are interesting in the sense. <laughs> what I'm sorry, booties are interesting in the sense that it doesn't matter if you have the flattest ass on earth or if you have a big, big, juicy butt. It all depends on how you dress it, and I just feel mm -hmm. like the cut of what she was wearing wasn't as flattering for what she does have. Mm -hmm. And I think yep. that was the issue because we've seen some amazing outfits of her that really show off her booty quite, quite well. Mm -hmm. And so when she slaps it, you're like, yeah. And this one, there was a lot of cheek showing, which is great. But the way the cut was made it seem like weirdly proportional and mm -hmm. it didn't show its full potential. I don't know. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll put some more shit in it and then it'll, you know, yeah. we'll, see, we'll see her back for all stars, I'm sure. Oh God! See, I can't. I'll, honestly, I cannot wait because I really do feel like this BBL storyline is going to definitely carry Continue. over into her like into her All Stars package, and I cannot wait to see the update. I really can't. You know, everybody <laughs> comes back to All Stars with lip filler, and she's going to come back mm -hmm. and be she's like, "Like mm. that's the lip, put that in my <laughs> ass, please. Put it in my ass. <laughs> Move it from the lips to the cheeks, baby. Boom! <laughs> All Star cheeks. There we go. <sighs> Love it. Okay. Wow, we did it. We got through all of the lip syncs, the looks from the queens that are still competing for the finale, because remember, we still haven't seen the winner yet for this season, but we will <laughs> next week, and we will absolutely be back to talk about everything from the finale, whatever it has in store for us, and break all of that down. So, Amon, is there anything you want to plug or anything else you want to say before we get out of here? No, um, I've, I've had a fantastic time um, covering the season with you guys. I'm kind of bummed that there's only one more episode left. I feel like this kind of, this season just really flew by for me. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a great time. Super excited for the finale. Um, I, you know, Team Nymphia mostly, but Team Sephira, if not. And if Plain Jane wins, then girl, I'm, I'm excited for the discourse. I am excited for the discourse, okay? Um, and yeah, you can follow me everywhere at Amon Adwin. I am just here for Drag Race as well as Big Brother Canada 12. Um, so yeah, and then Big Brother US is not far behind. So we'll be getting back into the summary swing of things. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And All Stars, right? We have All Stars mm -hmm. 9. And All Stars 9. 10. What nine. season are we on? Nine. All Stars so, 9 is like... not far behind. It is definitely yeah. on the way, baby. Yep. Yeah. All right, Beth, what about you? Um, you can follow me everywhere at Augusta Wind 11. Um, I'm also pulling double duty with Liana this week. I'm going to be a guest on the B and B, and so I'm very excited to uh, talk a little bit about Survivor. Um, and you can check me out on my weekly meltdown, being a mess with my friends Tyler and Allison as well. And you can find me on Twitter at Liana R H A P. Pui and I, uh, we the 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 household has been illnessed 
but we're feeling better. So we have recorded the uh, double coverage for Mass Singer and then obviously Drag Race. Loving, so excited um, to see who ultimately is going to end up the winner. Uh, and then happy that our team will be continuing, of course, for All Stars 9. And then as Beth mentioned, B&B, we are going to be talking about the latest episode of Survivor. We've got a really fun game planned, so I'm excited. And if you're a fan, check it out. And of course, check out Beth's coverage as well if you want more Survivor. So thank you to everybody for listening. If you want to leave a review on iTunes, you can do so robhuswebsite.com slash drag race. And thank you to the whole RHAP team for all of their help behind the scenes. We'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.